But there's also another side. That I don't think anybody here knows. My father worked hard. He fought hard. But he also loved fierce. I'll give one in, in, in my first um, year in, in secondary school, Federal Government College. Sorry. Prior to that, I was very excited to go to NMS, the Nigerian Military School. Prior. As a young boy, that was my dream. Everyone around me was going to NMS, and it was my dream to go there as well. And at some point, to become an army officer. As I'm up like military uniform stole for me as a little boy, I picked up of that in my mom's office. I went with my dad. My dad took me everywhere. I was exposed to so many people. General Loco has spoken. General Loco is not just a friend, he's a family. My father taught me that you can find family in the most obscure place. It's not only by blood. If I start to talk about General Loco today, we will forget about my father's people. As he said, he was one of the first people to introduce me to Christ. My father gave me the first steps. I was seven years old. He taught me how to reverse the car out of the garage and drive it back in. But he never knew that two people, then Lieutenant Oloko, and there was also somebody at the Corporal Joseph Ojolati, who was teaching me how to drive in the military Land Rover at that point in time. I would stop seven to eight kilos on the seat and drive a Land Rover. General Oloko at the time would let me drive his P2 then. I was just seven. By the time I was ten, I was able to drive comfortably. By the time I was thirteen, my father allowed me to drive on the road for the very first time. By the time I was fourteen, I drove to Lagos with my father by my side. It, coming back to the instance I was going to be, I was faced with a lot of bullying when I got into junior secondary school. Before going to boarding house, my father told me about his own experience in secondary school. How? He stuck his finger into the eye of a bee because my father was very smallish in stature. So he stuck his hand when the man, when the guy at that point in time continued to terrorize. And he said, "Always stand up for yourself. And if anybody tries to terrorize you, tell them that my father is a soldier." So, as Lord will have it, my first experience with a bully, somebody came and said, "Open your box." They too. He said, why? And he looked at me, started laughing. <laughs> Called about three other senior students and said, listen to this young boy. And asked him to open his box. Repeat what he said. I asked, why? He said, because I said so. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't open my box. Because my father is a soldier. <laughs> Within 10 seconds, I received eight slaps. And at that point, my brain reset. My father is not here. I have to use my brain. This is not the 1960s. This is the 1990s. And my father is not here. So I managed the situation. But I was in a lot of trouble at that point. It terrorized me so bad that I would stay out of the hostel for days, only to step in in the middle of the night, take my clothes, and run out again. On a faithful Sunday morning, my father came into Ilorin and just drove by to check on me. It wasn't a visiting day, but I mean, who could stop an army officer at the gate of a federal government college? Nobody. So my, my dad drove me and drove straight to my hostel. Fortunately, I was lingering somewhere around the hostel, not knowing that my father was coming to visit me. At that point, the senior who was bullying me cited me and said, Go away, you are a pastor, come here. I stood, very scared. Because he had sent a message to me that if he didn't find me and I didn't give him what he wanted, he wanted me to get him 1,000 naira, he was going to find me and kill me. As I was stepping towards him, I saw my father's car. My father was shocked when I was hesitant to come towards him. And I stood, fixed on his spot. My father was calling me, Alex, who is the senior, was calling me. Then my father came out of the car and said, Woman, are you mad? Come here! So I walked towards my father, knowing that I was coming back to the hotel to meet my water. After a lot of questioning and questioning, I was so scared to tell my dad what was going on. Finally, I told him. He said, What? Go and call me your house. 
So I went to the hostel and I told my father. And he said, What do I say? My father is calling me. By that time, everybody knew my father was alive. He said, What's the problem? I told him. He said, Well, you should have told me this. Now, do you have to tell your father? I said, But all of you saw when this guy was bullying me. Nobody talked. So he stepped to the side of the hostel and met my father. My father said, If you three minutes to produce that Alex, what is who will come? So he went. I think by that time, so many people had gathered just like this building upstairs looking through the window. And Alex found with his chest popped up and walked to knock my father. And as he went close to my father, my father just allowed him to come so close and then he brought out his fire and put it in his throat. Then you dare to threaten my son, my only son, he said to pay pain to touch my son. At that point in time, Alex was already shipping. He has been related on his father. So you see this weapon? You use the word kill lightly. You say you will kill my son. So he said, you say you pay to touch my son. We'll kill you. We'll come, locate your family, and wipe your family out. And that was the end. It became my school father. I never laughed for the end, for the rest of that year. And that was how my father was. He fought hard, he loved hard, and he was very hard work. As has been mentioned by several people who are giving tribute here today, my father had problems with people. And these problems he had with people were just the result of his personality. Even I, his son, and my siblings as well, we found it very difficult to grow up with him. So, of course, I always knew one thing. Father never did anything out of hatred. His problem, I remember, because my father told me everything. All the senior officers, all the issues that we talked about, my father told me. My father has no filter. I know those my father does not like. I know secrets about people. My father told me everything. My father told me secrets about the army. My father joined the army believing that he was going to be working on biological weapons. And he was so disappointed when he joined the Nigerian army and he saw that the Nigerian army did not have vision. So he spent the better part of his staff is frustrated. He told me, he said, he said, I'm frustrated. So when it was time for me he, to push me to join the army, I reminded him, I said, Daddy, you are the one telling me how the army frustrated you, and you want me to go there? He said, yes, but you are a doctor. It's different. He said, ah, I will think about it. I will think about it. He was a product of his experience. And when I say was, because this experience has happened in the past. My uncle has said it here, my father will always be referred to in the present and future sense, because he is alive in spirit with us. Sorry, excuse me, just like, give me a few seconds to get out of So, he had a very difficult childhood. And I will mention one story here. And um, Madam, you know, yes, it's again, it's not here. My father had one experience that anytime he tells me that story, he tells me that story at least twice every year. When it when starts, I'll say that you told me this before. He says, I know, but let me say it again. And when he says that story, he tears will roll down his feet. A man called, who is referred to as Navy Man, John Osage. My father refers to him as the man who changed the course of his life. At the point in time he was meant to go to Baptist Academy, there was nowhere for him to stay. And this was one person, regardless of his own state of living at the time, in one room, who gave him a home and took him as a brother. And till today, we've maintained that bond. My father, as has been mentioned, hated injustice. He fought unfairness. But over time, with old age, he began to realize that he could not talk his way to El Dorado because he always called it El Dorado. Perfection to him was El Dorado. So how he was able to protect himself and find peace was to stay away from what he perceived as injustice. So he prepared to stay on his own most times. And that is why for those who know, who know my father, my father could be in his house for three to four months and he would not step out once. He had peace in here. A lot of equipment in here, I moved out. Trucks and rental equipment. My father could spend three weeks on one equipment as a project. There was a truck that I moved yesterday, that was the next project. And we have talked about what we were going to do with that project. 
เราเอาหมายความว่าพิพาทผิดอานามพาผิดใจใจมีผิดมีวนใจพาผิด person he loved his family peers have memories of my father living a b o u t a l i k i as a young child in the book I do not far places that would take six to eight hours my father would leave that place at ten to eleven p.m. because he wanted to make sure when I woke up in the morning he was there. Even without a pass, for those who know the military, traveling without a pass is a very serious offense. My father would travel without a pass, and one of his superior officers once quoted was once quoted as saying, "You are more loyal to your family than the army." My father said, "Yes." My father sacrificed his future for his family, and we are forever grateful. He taught me so much. He taught all of us so much. He prepared us for success. It was always like a joke. I was as little as ten when he was with me. But though I may not come back, you will be in charge of the family. I didn't expect it. Now, even in December, we talked about it. And I said that at least, at least, at the very least, ah, that you are too big. Let's push to eighty. Then we start talking about it. Third month again, he said that you God. He said God, that you are too big. You are too big. I didn't see it coming. He spent Christmas celebrating New Year, all of his stuff in the past. So that was my father in a nutshell. Again, I would say he worked hard, he fought hard, and he loved very dear. So that I will not take too much of your time. I want to acknowledge some people because in no particular order. Again, it would be difficult for me to meet everyone. Everyone stayed there in some way, supported us, shown us love. Get tribute, but I will need to mention again. I've already done. I will do it again and acknowledge your mother, family, and the entire descendants of the dynasty. I will also show deep appreciation to the family of Alaji Tende. Alaji Tende is my maternal grandfather, who had a very, very unique relationship with his father. That's the story. But my uncles and aunties here would know. My father didn't like celebration. We rarely had birthdays, naming ceremonies, or anything. But for me, the naming ceremony was carried out on the insistence of my maternal grandfather. We have a lot of family friends who are who we particularly call family. The family of Justice Harun, Uncle Tiron. That you do for me, Uncle Benji. We call him, but his name is Mr. Benjamin Oguere. Professor Oloran Kaba, Mr. George Dogu, Uncle Tai. That is Mr. Tai Ogundiran. Tobio Kiyade, Dr. Kiyade Olafemiho, Professor Este Kuranda and family, Mr. Tevi Tope Emano Kabore, Mr. Olofeo. And only family that is going to your me and Uncle. From the Unilori family, I mean, the Uni University of Unilori has been part of our life as well. Not just the military, even though the focus is on my father. Unilori has played a very, very vital role in our life as well. I would like to thank the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ekwewode, Professor Rashid Adewe, Professor and Professor Mr. Pawale. Thank you, sir. Professor Fadi, staff of social science. Coming to the military constituents, the list is too long to explain, but I will try. I will start with Uncle Oloko. My immediate younger sister called when she was a toddler. She calls him Loko Loko. And when Uncle comes into the sitting room, he will shout, "Hey, who are you people?" Serious. My dad calls me Os, and he calls me Ons. When my dad used to travel at times with my mom for maybe a day or so, and I would be left alone to care for my younger sister, with the help of a few um, senior um, soldiers to help take care of the security, Colonel Serious would always he was just adjacent to our house at the point. He would always come and show us that he made breakfast. And your sister spend a few minutes with us at times, bring his own children over. So we will never forget. So, like, fast. Colonel 
Alicia Calambe, Major General Ben Anukun, calling up to Ben. Ben was the first person to introduce me to the first time. And those in the house, which my father still doesn't like till today. Lieutenant General Farouk Yaya, Chief of Minister, thank you, sir. Major General Uki, the Corps Commander of the Education Force. Major General Teo Mufoya retired. Major General Panjiron. Major General Soho. Major General Soho, I met for the first time in 1999 when I got the job. He was two houses from us at the time. Always very happy to meet what father's children. Even after then, so many years later, I went to a local. At the point in time, he was the commandant of the command secondary school, Nubi Farm, correct, sir? And I came to write an exam, and General Soho lodged me in the hotel and took care of my transport for two days. No question, I was so comfortable, and I felt like I was at home. It almost felt like I shouldn't come back to learn. Thank you very much. Brigadier General Babalola, the commander of the 22 Armored Brigade, is not present here today, but he has shown us tremendous support. Brigadier General Ola Shuko retired. Brigadier General Olorun Femi. Brigadier General Olorun Femi was very close to me, to my dad. I don't know if he's here today, but my dad likes him so much. Colonel Olai Wola, Major Henry Lee, Colonel Olai General UN Babangida, Brigadier General Muche Retire, Brigadier General Sadai, Colonel Yaya Kampo. We received all the tributes, all the tributes, and I must say we are tremendously grateful. Finally, I must say a big thank you to the Ilori Emirates. Because I'm sure a lot of people will ask questions. My father was a Dini man. Sign is right up there. How far is being buried in Ilori? My father told me about eight years ago, this is where I find peace. I will continue to be a Dini man but I always, I always have found my peace here. And because he found his peace here, he demanded that he buried in the for this reason, he always was endeared to anyone who was of ignoring or para ethnic origin. Because he said, They are our hosts. You don't fight your hosts. If they were not accommodating, we would not achieve what we have achieved today. My mother has risen to the position of professor at the University of Ignoring. My father retired from the army, serving many years here in Ignoring. At different times. I myself did schooling in Lawrence. So my father would say, by prop, we are also directly of the Lawrence. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. We really appreciate you. And that will I would, I would uh, urge us to continue to pray for the family. Uh, as my uncle has rightly said, that is not dead, he's alive for his spirit. And I can confidently say that we will continue to love him, we will continue to cherish his memory. His words ring so loudly in my ear as I stand right there. He feels as if he's standing beside him. Our relationship was very strong. I was his only son, and we, we formed a very strong bond. My father, myself, and my son. In fact, just a month ago, we took a picture where we, we three of us wore two, two sets of clothing. He wasn't the first. My father who was not someone who would like to take pictures until that day. And I forced him because we had so many arguments. He said, Daddy, the photographer is coming to mark my son's 10th birthday and mommy's sixth year. And we are going to dress up to take pictures with us. Then my friend, go and sit down. The photographer will come here and say, Yes, don't worry, we are not going to the studio. The photographer will come. He said, Okay, only my be clothes. He said, No problem. We only one picture. He said, No problem. So we took that first set of pictures. And then we changed into another set of clothes here. But my father thought, I was like, What? He went straight into his wardrobe and changed again. Before we knew anything, my father was the one calling the photographer to take pictures with different angles of the house. We didn't know. That just a month later, he, he wouldn't be with us. So, thank you again to my daddy, my mommy, my brothers, my sisters, and to the senior military officers 
Old seven are retired. And also, please, I'm not forgetting the rank and file. My father loved everybody. I must also pay tribute to a lot of people who work with that. At office, drivers, partners. I remember Uncle Babu, Uncle Joseph, Alaji. Alaji was a driver for my dad for so many years, but Alaji was like a father to me as well. Joseph was Alaji, as I said, he taught me how to drive in the Army Land Rover. Then we would drive, when, when I'm driving with the Land Rover from my house, from our house to Mami Market, people would be running away when they see this tiny boy driving the military Land Rover. So I'm not talking, in fact, I will confess here today, it was one of the soldiers who first taught me how to hold and fire a rifle, even though there was no bullet. But my father was not around. He taught me how to hold the rifle and aim and put the butt of the gun on my foot and fire. So my dad had an air rifle with pellets. So there was this boat that was coming from a house just in front of us. Some of us who know, um, I think it's Major Oak. They had goats that always come to our house and stop us. So I picked my father's air rifle one day, my father was out of town, and I loaded it with pellets. This goat used to terrorize us, trash our refuse, trash, and I picked the air rifle, and I remembered all the lessons I was taught by that goat. It's a small pellet aimed at the goat, and fired at the goat in us. And that was the last time that goat stopped us again. So thank you very much, everybody. God bless you as you go. Thank you. Thank you so very much. <laughs> okay, our dear daddy is going to be missed by everyone that knew him. Uh, he's an icon to reckon with. Uh, he's a man who can play greatly. It is a man as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we have come to the end of this celebration of life. Ready, uh, dear general. Uh, on behalf of the Mendes family, I would want to say thank you for, uh, to everyone that has made time to be part of this celebration. Uh, we pray that with love life, uh, good health, and peace, we are going to spend on health in Jesus' name. Okay, everybody, thank you. God bless you. See you some other time. God bless you. I'm going to leave you in the hands of the band to entertain us. Thank you. Uh, our words of encouragement, uh, our words of encouragement, our show of love, the stay in love with the world, with the family. Please don't let us uh, deny them that. Let us show them that we care. Let us show them that we are there for them. So ladies and gentlemen, I leave you in the hands of God who is able to keep and to make your way straight. God bless you. Thank you very much.